Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the command bulk insert. All of the SQL statements and data has been pushed to my GitHub account. Download that and walk through with me if you'd like. In our first example, we're going to be using all the date time data types. So notice we have a uh, date, date time, date time two, time, small date time, and date time offset. Now I'm using this ID as an integer. The first time it's just going to be a numeric value. On our next pass, we're going to change ID to an identity column and see how to use that as well. Here are the ranges for each data type. This section may become helpful when you start building your comma delimited file. Here is a basic insert statement using all the date data types. Take a moment and look at the way I formatted each value. Here is the data that we'll be pushing into the dates fields. Notice it's called dates.csv. The data is separated by commas. So here you see our ID. The second field is field date and then field date time. You see how we have three digits of precision, then seven digits of precision on date time two, then just the time, and then we have the small date time, followed by the most complicated data type is the date time offset. Here we go with our bulk insert command. Notice name of our database, DBO, here's the name of our table, from, you remember I just showed you the file, dates.csv, then we have the width. Now for the width, we're gonna look at the code page will be raw, the format is a CSV, the first row of data begins on line one, the field terminator is a comma, the max number of errors I can make before it stops processing is 10, and then the row terminator is the new line, bulk insert, go nine rows, do a little select statement. And there you have our nine rows, bulk insert, example one. In our second example, notice that we changed the type here. We say identity one, one. I'm gonna seed it with one, and then I'm gonna increment by one. Then notice on line six here, I took off the not null and the not null. So field date and field time can now have null values. In our second example, notice we're gonna be populating the same table. I've modified it. Then our data file is called dates with nulls CSV. I'm gonna say keep nulls, keep identity, and then code page raw CSV, start with line one, field separator, comma, max rows tens for errors, and carriage return line feed for our row terminator. Let's take a look at that file one more time. So here we have an identity. I want to use this actual value. And then notice I have missing values. So that's a keep nulls. Over here, I also have missing data as well. So keep nulls will actually insert nulls for these values. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, excellent. Now let's see the data. All right now when we look at the data, you will see that we get null values for that missing data from our comma delimited file. And then notice here, we also get it for the uh, field time. Now, here was one issue. Notice I populated the ID with the value from the file. So what's gonna happen is if I process this file again with this keep identity, we will have two sets of numbers that have one through nine. You know, that's not an identity. Identities kind of like they have to be unique. But watch what happens when I reprocess that file. And then let's select from it. And you can see here that we have two ones, two twos, all the way down to two nines. So when we're using this keyword, keep identity, it's actually keeping the identity value from that file, even though it will give us a problem, you know, in the future. So you have to know when to use this. Now, I'm gonna delete all the contents in here and we're gonna take out this uh, keep identity and let's see what happens. Notice I removed keep identity. I just did a select statement. Notice we have no data. Let's run it for the first time. It executed, see our values. Notice we have our one through nine. That's what we were thinking. Now, if I rerun this file, I do not wanna see one through nine appear again. Let's re-execute, okay. See our output, and now you can see that we have values 10 through 18. 
In this example, we have changed our data types to char, varchar, nchar, and varchar, unique identifier, and timestamp. Now, let's go ahead and uh, create this table. Let's drop it first. Let's create the table, and then let's take a look at the data. Now, in this data, we have a one, which will go into this identity column, and then AA will go into field char, notice a char two, and then a char for 10, and then an n char for two. And then notice here we have two unique identifiers, and those will go into those fields UID one and UID two. Now timestamp is a, a data type for a concurrency, and what it does is it stamps the row with a value. If you don't understand timestamp, I recommend you watch couple of videos I have on this to explain it to you because this has nothing to do with date and time. So maybe you need to check out that video if you're unfamiliar with this. But there we have our data and now let's see if we can use this bulk insert and load the data. Notice we're going to use string data CSV. I'm going to keep the nulls if they're there and let's go ahead and run this. So bulk insert, k6, let's see our data, and notice that we were able to get all our data. We got our unique identifiers, our timestamp fired correctly, and then we got our var char and char fields. All right, excellent. In our next example, notice on the unique ID, unique ID one, I'm putting a default value in there. This is a function new sequential ID, and it produces a unique ID. Now, up on the top one, notice these were nullable, but I didn't have a default value. Now we're changing it up just a little bit. My first one has a uh, default value. Now I'm going to show you the way it normally works with a SQL statement. Now notice I do not have unique ID one inside of my insert statement. So what will happen is this new sequential ID will give me a value. So I'm going to execute that. Now when I select star from that table, notice unique ID one got that value from new sequential ID. And of course, timestamp just gives me a unique value. So you saw it work using an insert statement. Now let's see how it works using bulk insert. I just selected star from that table and notice we got back no data. So now I'm gonna to try to do this bulk insert. Now I'm coming from the file string data with nulls. I have six rows, let's select the data. And notice filled UID one is null. Well, it looks like the default value did not fire when we did that insert. Well, now you know that's the way it works. If you ever use unique identifiers and you have null values, you know that the default value will not fire. And there you have it. Let us take a look at the numeric data types, starting with n, it's an identity column, all the way down to decimal. Bit, tiny n, small n, n, big n, float, real, numeric, and decimal. So when we have a table that has a bunch of columns and the not null attribute is assigned to the table, then that means all of the fields are required. So when we build a file, all of the columns have to exist in the file. Now, these right here are the ranges for each number. I'm just gonna explain one, like the tiny int. Notice tiny int says the minimum value could be zero, the max can be 255. So let's create that table, SQL Server, now the first thing we need to do is let's take a look at that data. You can see between each field I have a comma. And based on the number of columns you have in your table are the number of commas that will be inside of your file. Now when we use the bulk insert command, one of our parameters, field terminator, notice it says comma. Well, this can be any character. And what we have to do is we have to make sure that we just align that up correctly. So notice here that this would be field one, field two, field three, and so forth. Now you'll notice here on some of the lines, the numbers get real big. And why I'm doing that is we're gonna be testing the ranges on each of our numbers. So when I try to insert into like a big int, well, that is the number you saw here. This would be the max negative value that can go into a big int. And here you can see that the 32,000 number, that is the small int, this is the largest number, this is the smallest number. And then back to a tiny int, you can see here that we are going from 255, which is the largest number, and zero is the smallest. So you can see here that this file is testing our loading capabilities. Now let's process this file. 
So we're going to come down here and execute this, and then let's see all that data. And there you can see all the data was loaded correctly. In this example, we'll be using a table that has 34 columns. Now notice all of these are nullable except the very first one, which is a, an identity column. So let's go ahead and create this table. Now in the perfect world, I can insert into that table and then I can cherry pick columns and then load that data in there. Let's do that. And notice I can do a select from that table and we will get back our one row. You can see that 32 in there and the true value here. Now. I want to use bulk insert and I want to load data into some of these columns. How would I do that? Here's the command that we will insert bulk insert into that table and it's going to come from this file bunch of commas. Notice there's a bunch of commas here. That means for these nullable values, the value will be null. We're going to preserve that. Now you'll notice here that I have a value in field one, field two, no value in field three all the way until this varchar field. And then not another value until this date field. So all of these values right here are gonna be null. Now, see how I say keep null? Those will be preserved. So let's run this now and see what happens. So execute, and notice we have four new rows. You can see here that row one, remember when I did that insert command and I just cherry picked several columns? Then we used the bulk loader and I had a bunch of commas in there to load these. How can we make this whole process easier to use bulk insert? Let's see how I solve this. Here's my solution. I'm going to create a view and that view is only going to contain four fields and it's going to come from that table called table with 34 columns. Let's go ahead and create that. Let me execute both of these select statements so you can look at that data. You can see the table of 34. We got all 34 columns, five rows of data. On our view, we still have five rows, but I'm only cherry picking four of the columns to use. You can see this field decimal 132 value. You can see that right here. Now let's see how we can use bulk insert and use this view. As you can see, here's my bulk insert command. I'm going to be going up against the view and I'm going to be loading a file called 4 of 34. And this is what that looks like. Do you remember when we loaded the entire file, I had a bunch of commas in there? Well, we don't need to do that. We're going to use a view to make this easy. Now this is highly manageable. Let's go ahead and run this bulk insert and see this thing work. Execute. Notice it was successful. Let's now execute both of these SQL statements together. You can see this select star from table with 34 columns. We get all 34 columns. We have 10 rows. We have our new data down in field decimal one. Notice on the view, we still have 10 rows. Notice field decimal one has our new values and our field nchar one also has new values. So I've just shown you how to use a view to do a bulk load into a table that has a bunch of nullable columns to make your life easier. Bulk insert. It's a pretty cool command for loading a bunch of data into a SQL Server. I think the demo using the view object is a home run for many jobs. Remember, the columns must be nullable to perform that trick. Now, if you have any questions about this video or just want to leave a message of encouragement, please leave them below. That's all I have, team. Take care.